regions? What do we do with the United States of America? Two different global approaches stands, one nation, one of God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's please take a moment of uh, silent reflection for those we have lost through, uh, throughout the community and for the brave men and women of the armed forces uh, that are throughout the world fighting for us. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. King? Here. Mr. Schuster? Present. Dr. Rothschild? Here. Mr. McAndrew? Present. Uh, dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order. Um, proceed with interviews. OK, this evening we're interviewing candidates for the vacant position of city council. I respectfully request that all audience members turn off cell phones and refrain from speaking during the interviews. So may we please call the first candidate, Mr. Robert Gowan Collins. Yeah, I'm going to tell you. I'm sorry. Hi, Mr. Gowans. Thank you for coming. So uh, I'm going to give you a little parameters of what's involved tonight. So what we're going to do is give each candidate five minutes. Um, we do that for public comments. So just that's just an opening to introduce yourself. Um, and then each we're going to go around the room and each council person is going to have two questions that we'll ask for each candidate. Um, and if you'd like, you could start right now. Thank sure. You. Thank you. Um, good evening, council members, attorney Gallagher, and everyone else here today. My name is Robert Gowan Collins, and I currently reside on Woodlawn Street right here in Scranton. I am a current homeowner, taxpayer, and resident of this city. Before I begin, I would like to express my gratitude, gratitude, excuse me, and appreciation for your consideration in this vacant city council seat formerly held by Kyle Donahue. My spouse and I chose to call Scranton home, and that was a decision we did thoughtfully and carefully. I'll get the elephant out of the room right now. I wasn't born in Scranton. However, I was born right here in Northeastern Pennsylvania, more specifically, in Wilkes-Bear. Growing up, I was taught the meaning of what it is to be a hard worker, to have dedication and commitment in everything you do, and to have a deep understanding of community. We chose to call Scranton home due to its rich history, its beautiful homes and architectural designs, its residents, and above all, its sense of community and the pride. After purchasing our home, I immediately joined our Neighborhood Residents Association, where I'm an active member today. I became a volunteer with the NEPA Youth Shelter, and I'm a member of the NAACP local chapter. Additionally, last July, City Council appointed me as a member of the Zoning Board. I bring up these volunteer positions because I want to express and convey my commitment to you, to the City of Scranton, its residents, and above all, my desire to wanting to see the city move forward in a positive way. I am interested in this vacancy for several reasons. I believe in the city, I believe in the direction it's going, and I believe in its future. I want to be a conduit in moving the city forward. And if appointed, I know I could hit the ground running. Being a council member would enable me to combine my knowledge and passion of local government while being able to represent the citizens. Based on my professional and personal experience, I would be a team player who is willing to listen and bring ideas to the table. 
Additionally, I would bring my negotiation tactics, analytical, and independent thinking to this chamber. I can, God bless you. <laughs> I can unequivocally state that I am here to be a representative of the citizens of Scranton. Nothing more, nothing less. I will always work hard. I will do the research that's expected of me. I will be committed to our residents and I will provide transparency and I will be a liaison to our citizens. I warmly appreciate your time. <coughs> and now, what questions would you, do you have for me this evening? Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. We're gonna go in rotation like we normally do um, during a meeting. So Mr. King, would you please? Uh... Uh, Mr. Gohan Collins, first of all, thank you for uh, submitting your application for this open council position. Um, I will say that uh, I give anyone credit that's willing to put their name out there or put your name on a ballot to serve uh, in any elected uh, position. Uh, in this case, it's an appointed position. Um, the first question I have for you tonight, it's a softball. Um, if appointed to city council, do you plan on running for the seat in the spring primary of 2023? Thank you, Mr. King, for your question. And to be transparent, as I said in my opening statement, yes, I do. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question is, um, you just saw recently that we, we passed the budget and we recently uh, amended a budget that was presented to council um, by the mayor. And in, in fact, I found out that the, the mayor submitted that to us today and, and signed it, so that's a good thing. Um, what process would you use in approving and or amending uh, the very complicated city budget? Again, Mr. King, thank you for the question. I, I believe as a council member, it is our and my responsibility to go through each line methodically and thoughtfully to see where we could cut expenses or add expenses if need be. However, I would be a true representative of cautiousness, right? Because although Pell has stated we need to do tax increases, I, I wanna be cognizant of what we're increasing the taxes on and how it's affecting our residents. So to wrap up the question is, I think it's a line by line position and job to do. Thank you. Mr. Schuster. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, so my first question, um, in order to apply for this position, I would imagine that you have a love and a feeling of dedication for the city of Scranton. Up until this point in time, and uh, prior to possibly serving on this council, what work or actions have you accomplished which show this love and want to serve the citizens of Scranton? Sure, thank you Mr. Schuster for your question. I, I believe, as I stated in my statement, we got here and I literally, within the first month, was joining the Green Ridge Neighborhood Residents Association, volunteering, showing up to every single meeting, helping at volunteering at the NEPA Youth Shelter, being a member of the NAACP, and then additionally signing up and being appointed by the former council to the zoning board. I'm deeply committed in this city. We chose Scranton, right? And, and again, we did it thoughtfully and carefully, and I, I want to express and show my commitment by those actions and those volunteering positions. Thank you. Um, so what do you feel that you bring to the table? Specifically, what can you bring that would complement the makeup, the makeup of this council to fill any of our blind spots or deficiencies? And um, this may be some aspect of your personality, your education, your career experience, which council doesn't currently have. Sure. In my day-to-day -day job, my professional career as a salesperson, I jokingly say we have to wear many hats, right? And we have to be almost a chameleon because in one meeting you're facing you know, some obstacle and another you're facing another. Um, with that being said, I'm a true advocate for listening. Right? It's about listening, it's about having a civil discourse. We can agree and disagree civilly, but we have to hear each other. We have to understand where one another is coming from. So I think with me, I would bring a softer approach personally, however, without being a pushover. 
right? I think we have to hold true to our values and our morals while also understanding what the other person is saying. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Racha? Um, yes, yeah, so uh, you had mentioned a couple times that you were interested in moving Scranton forward. Uh, my question is, what would be your vision for the future of Scranton? Where do you see us in five, ten years? So, <laughs> thank you for your question, Dr. Rothschild. Interestingly enough, and uh, I'm going to give my age here, I was watching a TikTok, and there is, a, and I'm going to give a brief story. There's a TikTok called Pennsylvania Junkie. And on this news article, which I believe was written by US News, and I can't remember verbatim, however, the city was ranked, ranked number 17 in the nation for best places to live. I think that's something that we could capitalize on. People, yes, we're in a hard time. We're facing record inflation. But at the end of the day, this is a great city to raise a family in. It has a sense of pride. It has a sense of community. So for me, what that future looks like is ensuring that the next generations are staying here in Scranton, that the kids at the U and Marywood aren't getting their diplomas or degrees and leaving. So it's inviting. It's encompassing. It's all around a healthy place to live. Thank, Thank you. you. And uh, my second question, uh, because we have a number of think, candidates uh, tonight who have experience being uh, an appointee on a board or a commission or authority, uh, which you had mentioned already, but um, if you could uh, state your appointments and your interest in serving and any periods of absence from your duties. Sure, so my appointment is on the city zoning board. I believe to, I was appointed July 2021, went into effect for August 2021. With that, I have missed two absences, which was noted well in advance and they were due to scheduled vacations. And I'm sorry, the second part to your question? Um, it, the you covered everything. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your you, uh, responses Rochelle. and and thank you for applying. Thank you. Okay, I'm up next. So uh, again, thanks for coming uh, and, and seeking this position. So I have two. I only have two questions. And what do you see as the top three issues facing the city today, and and why? Sure. So first and for, thank you. Uh, Mr. McAndrew for your question. First would be the taxes, right? So residents are deeply concerned with the taxes and what we pay in EIT versus property taxes. I think we have to understand what Pell has recommended, but also understand the financial hardships that the city is facing and its residents. Another one would be blight properties. Uh, that's a huge concern throughout the city. I hear about it all the time. I do know code enforcement has stepping up and doing a better job and being more proactive in addition with open gov. And I believe the third issue is the stormwater and drainage that's up on East Mountain. Okay, thank you. Um, second question, as a council member, explain the importance of being actively involved within the community. Again, thank you for your question. It's showing up, right? It's not coming here just on Tuesday nights for a few hours, which sometimes seem like very long hours. However, it's being an active member in the community. It's going to different sections of the neighborhood. It's meeting the residents where they are, whether if it's going to the Southside Residents Association meeting or the Green Ridge, ne uh, Green Ridge Neighborhood Association meetings or up at NAOG. It's meeting the people where they are. And I believe that would be a, a version of being a proactive council member, excuse me. Okay, thank you very much. Um, that is all we have. Thanks okay. again for coming. And uh, we're not deciding tonight, so. Of course. Well, thank you. I appreciate all of your time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy, uh, could you please go get Mr. Howe? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, bye-bye.
Good evening, Mr. House. So for this evening, uh, the process will be that we will give you five minutes, um, up to five minutes, as your opening. Tell us a little bit about yourself and, and why you want to run. And, and, and again, th I didn't say it yet, but thank you very much for stepping up and coming and seeking this appointment. And then after them five minutes, we will go uh, here in order by council persons with some questions. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Well, my name is John Howe, uh, born here in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Uh, spent the majority of my life here. I went to high school in Riverside. We moved to music when I was a little bit younger and then moved back. I have a wife and two uh, children, uh, aged eight and six. They go to Howard Gardner School, uh, Multiple Intelligence School up on East Mountain. And uh, the reason that I decided to uh, to step into the arena of city council was because I believe that my generation, you know, my, my demographic needs to start taking more of an assertive position in local politics if we want to see the change that we want created. I sit here and watch council meetings and uh, everybody always has something to say because you can't please everybody, but nobody wants to take the time because it is very time consuming to sit here and go through what you guys have to deal with on a daily basis, on top of full-time jobs, you know? And I do commend you guys for that, and I do appreciate what you guys do for this city. And I believe that with my tenacity and my understanding of what's going on in the community and my willingness to take the time to sit there and listen to constituents and, and fellow citizens and, and understand where they're coming from, what their needs are, and coupling that with logic about what we need to do to move forward <coughs> can trans transpond what we're going through today in this city. I believe that and, uh, equality, <coughs> inclusiveness, diversity, <coughs> not just among our citizens, but amongst council as well. You know, we have made strides in Scranton with the female mayor, the first openly uh, I don't want to be non-politically correct, but I do work with the ACLU of, of uh, PA with the LGBTQ plus community uh, with their pride rallies and things of that nature. And we are, we are making strides. And I just believe that it is our turn and our time to step up and to lend you guys a hand. You know, we're always used to our fathers, our mothers, our uncles, excuse me. They're always taking the steps for us. And I'm a firm believer in if you want something to change, do it yourself or don't say anything about it. My family, I have brothers who have moved out of state and they say, John, I just bought a house on North Washington Avenue, beautiful house right by Marywood in Scranton, not in Dunmore. I could have moved to Valley View School District. I stayed in Scranton. He said, John, why don't you come down to Charlotte? He lives outside of North Carolina, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. And I said, well, Jake, if I want to uh, be a complainer and run and say about how bad my city is, what have I done to make it better? You know, this is my chance to show my children and everybody else that Scranton can be great again. We're all right. We're nowhere where we need to be. And for that to happen, it needs to take time. And we need more people like you guys have to take that step and try to propel us into the future by starting with ourselves. Instead of looking outside and looking for help from others, we need to help ourselves. And as a Scrantonian, born in Westside, I like to help myself. So that is why I'm here. And I appreciate your guys' time and consideration and allowing me to have this forum to speak on it. I'm open to any questions. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, John, I appreciate you uh, being willing to submit your name and, you know, stand up here uh, before the council and to interview and submit your resume, which we reviewed everyone's resumes as well. So uh, I appreciate that. Um, so the first question is going to be a very easy uh, yes or no question. Um, if appointed to city council, do you plan on running for the seat in the spring primary of 2023? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Um, 
Now, the second question is, um, if, if you've been watching council or reading about council recently, you'll see that we just went through um, a budget process. And um, so I would like to know what process would you use in approving and or amending um, the city budget? Um, well, I believe that what you guys did, I, the process of, of going through a budget and amending budgets, you know, everybody wants something. Somebody needs more of this, we need more of that. And it's more along the lines of what can we handle? So when it comes to finalizing a budget or considering a budget, it would have to come through and take into consideration everybody. And it's not just my opinion, it's not political backgrounds on what we believe we should do. It is about what we can afford to do, especially coming out of uh, Act 47, and moving forward to be able to sustain that ourselves. And so the way I would do it is that I would think logically, and I think that council did take a step in the proper direction by amending the, the increase in taxes and not making it such a high amount, but understanding that there does need to be an ebb and a flow in order for us to be able to, to, to combat going back to a distressed city. And I believe they made a proper choice and I would, I, I would tend to say that I would have voted in, in the same manner per se, you know, according to what I believe the city can handle. And what is logic? You can't expect to go to a grocery store and get a carton of eggs for free. You know, you have to pay something. And there's also, I'm not gonna pay $5 for a carton of eggs. You know, that there's that logic to it. So that's pretty, I hope that kind of answers the question of what you were getting at, but that's the way I view things. And that's the way I would have handled and approached the budget is line by line, step by step. What can we do? How can we implement it? Is it feasible? Is it sustainable? And is it gonna help us in the long run maintain independence and not need to have third parties or somebody else come in and tell us what we need to do? I believe we could handle it ourselves. And we have bright young men and women up here who can formulate those thoughts and come to an agreement. And we're only one part of the, the cog of the wheel. You know, it's, there's multiple things at, at play, but I believe that city council is the people's voice of it. And we have to take that into consideration as well. Because at the end of the day, we can be city council, but we can't council a city of no citizens. So without our citizens and keeping them in mind, then we don't have anything. We don't have titles. Thank you, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, Absolutely. My first question is, in order to apply for this position, I would imagine that you have a love and a feeling of dedication for the city of Scranton. Up to this point in time and prior to possibly serving on this council, what work or actions have you accomplished which shows your love and your want to serve the citizens of Scranton? Oh, <laughs> you can go around any youth campus, ask about Coach John, right? Whether it's North Scranton Vikings, whether it's North Scranton Little League, whether, whether it's Holy Cross where I, my company that I co-own sponsors basketball teams, um, I am out there. Uh, I, I put myself out there and I'm a firm believer in the youth being our answer. And in order for them to be what we need them to be, we have to stand, step up and show leadership to them. You know, I'm not really a football coach, but I'm at every practice and every game. My kids play, but regardless, I'm there for whether they play on that league or some other league, I'm involved. If there's a, a food drive, I'm there. I don't tout money and I don't tout, uh, put my big picture on sign saying, oh, look at me, here I am, because I believe what's done in the dark comes to light. And the more you do behind closed doors, that's good and my belief will be rewarded. So I don't mean to say, oh, I do all these great things for youth and the community because there's so much more I can do and there's so much more like a Tish Lavelle, who I believe is one of the greatest inspirations this city has to offer, which I don't know if any of you guys know of her, but she is like an inspiration to me as well. And I try to follow her. So I'm always talking to her. Tish, who needs what? Who's struggling? You know, 
If there's some dirt, my kids, they know. We go to a park, first thing we do before we play, <coughs> we pick up the trash. It's not our trash, you know, but it's your community. If you want to enjoy the place, you got to take care of it. It's just like a family. It takes a village to raise a child. And we have one huge child here in this city. And it's going to take every single one of us. And I firmly believe that. And there's, there, there's so much I can get into, and I don't want to take up too much time on it. And there's so many more plans that I have that just haven't been put into motion because I was waiting for next year for other things to fall in place. But you haven't heard of me yet because I'm a silent person. But whether it's here or somewhere else, you'll know the name John Howe when it comes to the community and organizing for people. And, and that's everybody. Children, men, women, doesn't matter. I love, I truly love this city. I really do. Thank and you. I'm not leaving it. Thank you. Um, the next question is, what do you feel that you bring to the table? Specifically, what can you bring to complement the makeup of this council, fill any blind spots or deficiencies which we have? And this may be some aspect of your personality, your education, your career experience that we do not currently have within the makeup. Well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna shoot it uh, short. I sat in that room over there with some seasoned fellows, right? They, they've been around and they have some experience. But I have youth. And I have the ability to come out here every day and I do own a business. It's not my full-time job. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a homebody, I'm a father, you know? I'm out in the streets, I'm helping people. So all the time that people need to delegate and time management towards, oh, well, I have to go to work here and then I have to do this and then I have to go to a meeting on Tuesday night. No, I believe city council is, Wake up eight o'clock, well, not wake up, come out the door at eight o'clock and your city council for me, because that's the way my life is set up. I'm fortunate enough to have that opportunity. So it's not, oh, I'm missing a meeting or, oh, I can't make it to this committee or, oh, I can't go talk to this resident. I'm there. So I'm going to be the person when maybe there's just a lot on our plate and people are complaining, oh, you haven't gotten out to the people of uh, Colfax Street and stuff like that. Well, I'm here. This is where we are. Let's talk about it. And that's what I'll be every day from tomorrow on. That's how it's going to be. And, and that's what you get with me. I'm a straight shooter. And I, people like to talk to me because I listen. I, I look like a big overbearing guy. But I'll listen and I understand. And I will articulate that back to what we have going on here. And I don't think this is me versus anyone, excuse me, anybody else when it comes to our decision making. We're one. We have to come to a, con to, to, to a consensus regardless of, like I said, politics or anything else. And the underlying thing of that would have to be what's best for the citizens, what they can handle, what we can handle because we're taxpayers as well and people seem to forget that, right? But, you know, with, with, within reason, without being too outlandish, you know, and that's, it's a team. You're going to get a team, a team member with me and not somebody that's so converse, not somebody who's so combative and saying, oh, well, I don't like this person's ideas, so I'm going to just do this despite them. At the end of the day, every decision I make is going to be what's best for the citizens of this, of this great city. Thank you. Thank you uh, for applying and, and coming tonight to interview. Uh, I had a couple of questions as well. Um, my first one uh, is what is your vision for the future of the city of Scranton? Where do you see us in say five to 10 years or where would you like us to be? Um, where I would like us to be is, is to be the best city with the most balanced budget with surplus, you know, but within reason here, knowing what we just battled to come back from after 30 years, which I, I do attribute to the hard work of council. And, you know, I would like to see us less crime, uh, address some of these school issues that we have going on because that's very important to me. Uh, like I said, to me, the children are the future and without a good education, you're not gonna really have a good tax base. Uh, that's my, uh, it's not a fact, it's my opinion. Um, 
And five years, I mean, that's five years better than where we are today. I mean, that's kind of a short term for me, so I can't do any, say anything too drastic, but maintaining a positive budget, you know, make sure that we have a, a balanced budget every year, which sometimes we might have to go back and forth and it might go from 92 amendments to 22 amendments. But, you know, making sure that this budget is proper, making sure our streets and our infrastructure is taken care of well and in a better position than it is now. Um, and I know that we might not be matching up to other cities of our size when it comes to, you know, paying quality city employees and, and things of that nature. I would love to be competitive, but I also want to be a place where people just don't come and say, oh, look, it, we got the U. That's a great school. Look at Marywood, awesome school. We got Lackawanna College, great school. I want them to say, oh, that's just not the place from the office. That's Scranton. They used to have 145,000 people in it at one time. People used to come here to see if they could make it on Broadway, you know, and that's Scranton. And that's what I want them to see. I want them to see the greatness and I want to be able to get back to that. It's gonna take time. It's gonna take a lot of time and it, it might not be me who can help bring that all the way through five years. You know, you guys might see it be somebody else, but I know one thing, you guys do choose me, then you guys are gonna get a dog. You guys are gonna get somebody who is at the bone, chomping at the bit, ready to go, ready to listen to everybody and abs uh, absorb every piece of knowledge that he can to make us be better than we were 10 years ago. I want to be, like I said, have a balanced budget, better school outlook. I'd like to have better roads, more. I'd like to bring more revitalization to downtown, you know, have that buzzing a little bit more and, and, and try to bring in new people from outside to bring that back, you know, keep people here. We're getting people to come from to school here to stay. We can't keep people from here to stay. And that's, that's a big thing for me. I'd like to see them stay and see the gem that we really can be. Thank you. And um, have you ever been or are you currently serving on any city uh, board commission or authority? And if so, if you could state those positions. No, I have never been on any of those. I have volunteered for various... Uh, boards when it was uh, the SLHDA, I believe it was, with Head Start and dealing with that. I was the board liaison for them. Um, I was on budget committees, hiring committees, you know, bylaws, a lot of things. I understand the processes here. And in my education of a legal background, I do understand the importance and the processes here. And um, that, that's not something that's foreign to me. And when I, when I do get here, because I believe I'll be here, whether it's through election or whether it's through appointment, um, we will be ready to go and we won't miss a beat. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Rasha. Okay. Um, thanks again, Mr. Howe, for coming. And what do you see as the top three issues facing the city today and why? Top three issues? Well, if I listen to the people at the corner store, it's taxes, appraisals, <laughs> these things. But taxes are, are an issue because they help play into our budget. This is where some of our money comes from to be able to plan for the years, right? So that's always gonna be a big issue for us. But for me, schools. School is a huge, again, huge issue that's, that's facing Scram with shutting down schools and, you know, there, there's things going on with, you know, I believe not enough room for the students that we're getting ready to displace out of a couple schools. So that's two things for me. And another thing would be, honestly, I think we don't talk much about it. Crime, I believe that crime is great. Everybody talks about the crime. But, you know, that's like a easy scapegoat topic. Oh, we want to get better on crime. I think that what Scranton Police is doing with what they're, what they're able to do, with what they have is a great job. 
I believe that they all deserve a round of applause and they work hard for us. But of course, if we had a, a world with no crime, it'd be great. But we do have it. But I'm more worried about the drugs that come in. Uh, I also um, believe that there's things that go on behind the, the, behind the scenes that sometimes need to come to light when it, when it comes to the decision makings on these issues. But other than that, I mean, crime is the easy one. Education, first and foremost, that we have, we have to get the stuff with the district situated. And taxes, I wanna make sure that our taxes don't try to inflate. I mean, I don't wanna go give a 13% decrease, you know, and have that situation again. But, um, you know, just trying to maintain. Well, of course, taxes are gonna increase when, you have, when you're trying to build something. You have to pay for it. But I, I really had to say blight in lieu of crime. It was just property blight. You know, you can go down parts of North Scranton. I used to live on Putnam Street, and, you know, a couple of those houses were just rough. You know, a couple of the properties, they got the they, they city to get to them, did get them taken down. And when you look out your window and you see dilapidated buildings or over, overgrown grass, it kind of puts a damper on your communal spirit in the community. So I think that if we could take care of these things, and really attack the education first and foremost. Education, education, we could try to find ways to help the school district and help our youth. And then maybe try to find some other ways to ease the tax burden on our residents. And, uh, you know, try to, like I was previously stated, you know, some of these places inside of the university and, you know, these private businesses and stuff like that, if we could try to check these routes to try to help make up for the losses and things of that nature. Um, that, that, that would be it. Okay, so next question. As a council member, explain the importance of being actively involved within uh, your community. Well, if you're not there, if you're not seen within the community, then do they really believe in you? You know, uh, like I said before, I'm, I'm, I'm always out. I'm always in the community. People know they can see Big John, the kids, they call me Big John, or Coach John, you know, they can see him whenever. You know, they love me and I love doing it for them. I'll spend thousands of dollars on new sports, you know, and the parents appreciate that and families appreciate that and communities appreciate that. So if you're not gonna be out there in the community and you're just gonna be behind your closed door, go to your job, come to your meetings, sit for your committees, do that. What it, how are you really getting in touch with your base? How are you really in touch with the citizens? You're not. They're going to come here. They're going to sit. They're going to say their piece. And then they got five minutes. After that, it could be out of sight, out of mind. It's not what you get with me. If I'm, if I'm there, I'm in the open. You don't have to look to find me. You know where I'm at. Or you can know where I'm at. I'm only a phone call away. And that, uh, I apologize, but that's, that's how passionate I am about it. I'm not, a, uh, I'm not a standoffish person. If I'm in it, I'm, <laughs> I'm overly in it. If somebody wants to see me or see someone counsel, they will see me. First night, I'll be there. Scram Police having you know, a, a gift raise, a toy fund, a toy fundraiser to drop off toys for, for, for kids in need, I'm there. You know, things of that, they need to see you. They need to know that we stand with them, that we are one of them because essentially we are. And we were once them sitting from the outside looking in until we took that step. Thank you. That is all. Um, once again, thank you for coming. And uh, we will make our decision until next week. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you sir. very much. Again. See you.
Yeah, you know, the last place we were in before we bought our house. The what now? You... We lived on, on Putnam Street in the same house we rented it. Then we bought our house. And then he moved in after. Ah. Because I had something mm. got delivered there instead of our current address. And I had to go pick it up. Because it was years back. And he was there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's so funny. <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Smurl. Um, thank you for coming. Thank you for um, doing the interview. And okay, so uh, what the process will be this evening is we'll give you five minutes. Uh, uh, to, as you're opening, uh, talk a little talk a bit about yourself, why you're here. And then what we're going to do is through rotation, two questions per council person. Okay? Okay. Begin. Okay. Um, Gerald Smurl, Prospect Avenue in Scranton. A uh, small business owner for over 30 years in the city. Um, I also own um, uh, apartment buildings. Um, we've purchased old um, rundown buildings and, and rehabbed them and, and um, kept them and, and still have them today. And um, um, the reason, um, I, I guess the reason I, I'm looking to be appointed to council would be to um, uh, address issues such as blight uh, and other concerns in our neighborhood to um, uh, control stuff like that. Um, I'm also um, a chairman on the Housing Appeals Board, which um, works with licensing and inspection, and um, we deal with absentee landlords and, and, and things such as that. So I, I think I've got experience on that. And um, I'd also like to work on uh, parks uh, and um, recreation, things like that. I'm, uh, I was the co-chair, Fife's chairman of the, of the Recreation Authority also. Um, so I, I, I think that experience and, and having my own business and um, working with budgets and working with, with, with people every day, uh, I, I think I have experience with that that would help with council. Thank you. Um, now we'll start with our questioning, Mr. King. Hi, uh, Mr. Smurl. First of all, uh, thank you for applying for this position. Um, as I mentioned to some of the other uh, prospective candidates, I, I really have a lot of respect for anyone that's willing to put their name out there, whether it's on a ballot or you know, to apply for an open position like this to serve the city of Scranton. So thank you um, for doing that. Um, my first question is a very simple yes, no question. Um, if appointed to city council, do you plan on running for the seat in the spring primary of 2023? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. So my next question is, um, if you've been following city council recently, uh, you see that over the last three weeks, maybe a month or so, we've been working on, on the budget and the mayor submitted a budget to us. Uh, the recommended 3% increase, and ultimately we arrived at, at a 2% increase. Um, so what process would you use in approaching, or excuse me, in approving and or amending the city budget? Well, I'd really like to see um, cuts made, uh, not, not a large like years ago we had, um, uh, no increases, no tax increase, no everything. Uh, I believe that just causes problems further down the road. I, I, I think small increments of um, tax increases is a natural thing to happen because of inflation and things like that. Um, I, I think that would be the direction to go in. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, my first question is, in order to apply for this position, I would imagine that you have a love and a feeling of dedication for the city of Scranton. Up to this point in time and prior to possibly serving on this council, what work or actions have you accomplished which shows this love and want to serve the citizens of, of Scranton? What I've accomplished is um, <clears throat> my business in the city. Um, it, it's, I, I've been here a long time. I've invested in my neighborhood. Um, we've, we've purchased blighted properties and rehabbed them and, and have uh, kept them up. And um, being on the, the Housing Appeals Board, I, I um, I'm involved in the small government as, as of that, and the, um, uh, the Recreation Authority was on. Um, we had multiple projects up there. Um, we worked for years up there, and uh, some of them were very big projects, and, and some of them were small as just raking leaves, but um, we're very dedicated to the city, and I've kept my business and, and everything else in the city. 
the next question is, what do you feel that you bring to the table? Specifically, what can you bring that would complement the makeup of the council as it is, filling any of our blind spots, any of our deficiencies? This may be some aspect of your personality, education, career experience, which council does not currently have. Well, uh, being a, a small business owner in Scranton, I, I think that's a, an asset that I could uh, bring to council. Um, <laughs> dealing with, uh, with budgets such as that and, and uh, with personnel. And uh, also my experience on the Housing Appeals Board dealing with blighted properties and, and um, um, out of town landlords and, um, and problems like that. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, may I may also say one thing. I, I, being, uh, having a business in Scranton, um, I realize if, if I do get appointed to the council chair, I would no longer work for the city of Scranton. I, I currently do work um, for the city in fire stations, in city hall, in, in different areas. Um, I, I don't feel that would be appropriate anymore. So if I were to be appointed, um, my business would no longer um, work for the city. Thank you for, for coming tonight and being interested in serving on council. Uh, I have a few questions as well. Uh, my first one is, what is your vision for the future for the city of Scranton? Where do you see us in five or 10 years from, from now? Um, my vision is, is, is to basically stay on the course we're on. Uh, I, I think everyone on council has the same goals I have, is to make it uh, a safer uh, environment to raise your family and, and, and to live in Scranton and to work in Scranton. Um, I, I think um, we're, we are on the right track, and I, I'd like to see it continue in that direction. Thank you, and uh, my next question, you answered some of this already, but uh, if you are an appointee of a city board, commission, or authority, uh, can you state those appointments, your interest in serving, and any periods of absence from your duties? I mean, I'm the, the question was about if, you, if you're serving on city authorities or boards, if you could state what those positions are, okay. um, and then if you've had any absences from those positions. Well, the positions where I am the current chairman of the Housing Appeals Board, um, it, it deals with a blight, it deals with um, licensing inspection, garbage fees, a, a bunch of different things. So I, I've had a lot of experience with that. And also I was the uh, um, vice chair of the Scrap Municipal Recreation Authority, um, which, which put me in, in the Ock Park mostly. Um, and, and we've had multiple uh, projects up there that have um, that have really created a, a, a nice park for the city. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Smurl. So, um, what do you see as the top three issues facing the city today and why? The top three issues? Um, my top issue is blight. Um, unsafe neighborhoods. Uh, I, I believe uh, blight brings the worst of everything out. I, I think that's something that uh, should be worked on. Um, the, the, the second thing, I, I guess, would be um, um, organize, organizing neighborhood groups again and getting back to the neighbors. Uh, I, I don't see, we used to see neighborhood groups and, and uh, people would go there from, from the uh, administration and council members would go. Uh, I don't see that happening anymore. I think that's something that should be really um, looked into and, and, and to do it again, to be involved in the neighborhoods. <coughs> and number three. And number three. Um, number three. Um, I, I guess preserving what we have, um, as in keeping uh, projects going to keep our infrastructure building. That there are projects now going on in the city uh, with ARPA money, naturally um, rehabbing um, different projects in, in the fire stations in City Hall. I hope to see City Hall keep on getting renovated and and keep the building. I, I think it's a, a huge asset for the building or for the city. Thank you. Um, question number two. As a council member, explain the importance of being actively involved within the community. Well, to be, <laughs> if, if you're a councilman and, 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 um, and you want to, to get anything done, you've got to go to the community, you've got to hear the problems right from where they start. Um, so I, I think that's, that's what you've got to do is go out and, and, and hear the problems. There, there are a lot of people that have a lot of 
issues uh, and they simply can't make it here to city council to explain your, the issues to them. Um, how do they reach people? A lot of older people in our neighborhoods too. Um, and that's where I see uh, the, the neighborhood groups coming back as a, as a giant asset. Thank you. Well, that's, um, that's all for questioning tonight. Thanks again for coming. Uh, our decision will be made by next meeting. Okay. Thanks again. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very Smart. much. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Good night. Thank you. <laughs> That's the goal, yeah. Good evening, Mr. Matievich. Thank you for coming. Thank you, sir. Uh, so the process for this evening will be, um, we'll give you five minutes if you need okay. uh, to, you know, open, to open and state why you want to be here and points that you'd like to make. And then we'll go through a rotation of two questions per uh, council person okay. that we've already asked previous candidates. Okay. All right. So once again, uh, Mr. McAndrew, Mr. King, Mr. Schuster, Dr. Rothschild and Attorney Gallagher, thank you for this opportunity to uh, be, in, be in front of you tonight uh, for this uh, vacancy with uh, Councilman Donahue now being our state rep in the 113th district. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of the city of Scranton, married, uh, wife Laura, daughter Morgan, um, grew up in the High Park section, currently live in the Trip Park section. I'm an honors graduate of the West Scranton High School, number two in my class in uh, 1983, graduate of um, the University of Scranton, 35 year employee of Sanofi, which is one of the largest vaccine manufacturers in the world, uh, stationed in New Jersey, France, uh, Swiftwater, and we have an office over here in, in Muzik. Um, I spent more than half of my adult life uh, serving the community in various capacities, whether it be uh, the Neighborhood Association, Trip Park is the, the Vice President, the Bulls Head uh, Weston Field Neighborhood Association, number of fraternal organizations, as well as one, one area that uh, I'm very proud of is the Black Sheep of West Grant, in which we do stuff for sick children in the community. So I, I want to continue that. Uh, effort that I've done in those other organizations and neighborhood associations here at uh, City Council in that open position that you have with uh, Mr. Donahue now uh, resigning. Uh, basically, what I would uh, like to do is I'm a, I'm a good listener. Not only do I, I listen to what people say, I hear them, and then I can make the uh, right and, and hard decisions to know what's good for the people, what's good for the employees, what's good for the city. And if it's, you have to say no, you know, I don't have a problem saying that and I will be able to back up uh, my reasons why, you know, I, I will, you know, say that, say no and act that way. But I'm ready, willing and able to start tonight, you know, f for, the, for the open position. And I um, look forward to the questions, you know, that you have and ready to serve the, the city, the citizens of Scranton and uh, the surrounding community as a member of Scranton City Council. Thank you. Mr. King. Okay, uh, Mr. Matievich, thank you very much for applying for this open position. As I've told all the other uh, potential candidates, I have the utmost respect for anyone that's willing to serve our city in any capacity. So uh, thank you for submitting your application and for being here tonight. Um, the first question is, is a softball question. Um, if appointed to city council, do you plan on running for the uh, seat in the spring primary of 2023? Currently, I'm uh, here tonight uh, to apply for the, the open positions. For the upcoming seat, uh, uh, this term here, plus the two other terms, I would leave that up to the, the residents of the, the city. If they feel that I'm doing a good job and they want me to seek that position, I'm sure I can get 100 people to sign a petition you know, to run. But for, for right now, tonight, I'm here you know, for that open seat. Good, thank you. Okay, the second question is, um, 
You, you know that we just went through uh, the budget process and um, you know, initially the, the mayor proposed a 3% increase and ultimately we arrived at a, a, a 2% uh, tax increase and uh, it was a rather long, hard, arduous process. So what process would you use in approving and or amending the city's budget? I would have looked at uh, what is new in the budget other than keeping the ship afloat. Uh, I think the uh, citizens of Scranton are being overtaxed right now. So I would not have uh, done anything with raising taxes, knowing that they're going to be taxed from, you know, up the street. I would have looked at um, putting people's raises and positions in line with other raises and positions that people are, are getting, one, two percent. Uh, it's a tough time to go and ask the people of Scranton to pay more. And I would have went line by line and anything that was new, look for real justification of something that um, may have been covered off by someone else within the city, but I would not have raised uh, taxes at all. And I would have had to look to see where that original money was going, you know, cut that to start, and then look to cut more to see what we can give the taxpayers back because a, a budget of $116 million, when we just got, uh, you know, almost $79, $80 million of uh, federal funds with the inf infrastructure bill, we may have been able to offset that with uh, other costs with that money and give the people a, a break. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Um, in order to apply for this position, I would imagine that you have a love and a feeling of dedication for the city of Scranton. Up to this point in time, and prior to possibly serving on this council, what works or actions have you accomplished which shows your love and your want to serve the citizens of Scranton? As I said, in, uh, Mr. Schuster, thanks for that question. I said in my opening remarks, I spent uh, most of half of my adult life, you know, serving the city of Scranton, neighborhoods, starting from a, uh, a softball coach and my daughter, or when she was four years old, you know, I was one of the only fathers who, you know, worked on the cheerleading at the Westside Falcons. You know, having a daughter, you're, you don't have a football player out there, as uh, Mr. McAndrew, you know, would know. So I, I've dedicated my life to those areas. I still am very active in the Bulls Head Western Field Neighborhood Association, the Trip Park Civic Association. I care about my community. I'm in fraternal organizations, the Ancient Order of Hibernians, doing a lot of stuff for the areas, for the people of this area. And I think as being a member of these, those two neighborhood associations, being involved in youth sports and, uh, you know, cheerleading, uh, I have a passion for the city and I could try to help move the city forward by working with other government agencies, as, as you probably all do, to get funds that are ours, bring them home and, you know, show that I'm ready, willing and able and dedicate my, my life in that next year, you know, as to making the city the place where people want to raise their families. There's challenges going on and everybody has those challenges, but I think we can all work together for the better of Scranton because I was born and raised here and unfortunately, I'm going to spend all of my days here. Thank you. What do you feel that you bring to the table? Specifically, what can you bring to complement the makeup of the council to fill any of our deficiencies? Um, this may be an aspect of your personality, your education, career experience, um, something that council at this point in time doesn't have. Well, I, I believe everyone on council has their in individual traits. You know, I, I'm, um, I, know, I know people. And I could, you know, talk to people. I can work with people. I'm a collaborator. And, and I have to do that at work in my job. When you're working, you know, on projects for a, a worldwide business and you've got people, you know, all over the place, you know, doing different things, managing projects, managing budgets, being able to negotiate. And I think those traits that I, I, I have at work, those traits that I have in the community, I believe I could bring those to this board, be an asset. And, and also I, I did that uh, when I was on the Scranton Parking Authority. I was, when, when previous councils actually, you know, moved us down in that distressed status, you know, I had to be one of the members there. We tried to right the ship, you know, and we did. And, and now the council doesn't have that line in the budget of that debt service. You know, you've just expanded that contract with NDC for five more years, but we're out of the parking business. 
you know, we still own the garages. And I, and I think that that's something is being on that chairman through three administrations, you know, may say a lot for what uh, people think of me, you know, in the community and, and what I could do to benefit and complement this board. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, thank you for, for coming this evening and, and for applying for, for the city council vacancy. Uh, my first question is, what is your vision for the future of Scranton? Where do you see us in, in five or to ten, 10 years from now? I see us five to 10 years now as a city that people will want to continue to come back to. You know, many years ago when we were the, the point person, if you could play Scranton, you could play anywhere. You know, we need to have that here in the city today. We have a multitude of venues in which people can come here. We have to be proud. We have to be able to take someone from out of town, bring them here, show them what we got, and want them to, want them to stay. Now, we have done a lot of work in the last uh, 15 years in the downtown. Downtown is beautiful. Downtown is downtown. That's one neighborhood. We have West Scranton, we have North Scranton, we have South Side, we have East Scranton, we have Bone Hill, we have Park Hill, we have the Heights, we have Trip Park, we have Hyde Park, we have the Plot, we have Weston Field, Petersburg, Little England. We gotta now get out into those other communities of our city, the larger Scranton, it's all many pieces of puzzle, and we need to sell that to people to come in, to wanna raise their family here, to wanna have this as their base for businesses. There's many buildings downtown that we can still, you know, utilize, you know, I bought my home in Scranton. I could have gone anywhere working for a worldwide manufacturer. I chose to live in Trip Park. You know, I'm very proud of that. Raised my family here. We have good schools, nice parks, you know, but we can take them up a notch. I would say, you know, kick them up. You gotta have a three-year plan, a five-year plan, and a 10-year plan. This seat here probably will work on a three-year plan in conjunction with the capital budget, and then, you know, move forward five years, seven years, 10 years out. But, that's what I can bring to the city. And uh, do you have experience uh, either in the past or if you're currently serving on a city board commission or authority, um, and if you could state those appointments uh, and you're interested in serving in any absences from, uh, from those positions? I'm willing to serve the, the city in this seat here and any other seats that would be available. I have not applied for them in the past because I was the chairman of the Parking Authority. I was on that board since 2006, as I said, through three administrations. I had the opportunities to, I think, serve on the Planning Commission, on the Zoning Commission. You know, at the time I was uh, working, you know, and I had a little bit more time to, to spend, and I'd be glad to give back to the city. And I, I actually do that now, you know, in the communities, in the neighborhood associations, and, you know, working with children. So, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Matijevic, um, what do you see as the top three issues facing the city and why? The top issues that we have facing the city right now, I think we need to uh, get our labor agreements solved between our, our police and fire. Those are hardworking individuals that protect the citizens of Scranton on a daily basis. To see that go to arbitration, you know, when it was in work for a year, I think that uh, that's one top issue. The second issue that I see is the people of our city are overburdened with taxes. We need to look at ways to stabilize what they need to pay, but still continue to provide the services that they need. They want their garbage picked up. They want their, their streets plowed. They want their potholes fixed. They, they want their neighborhoods to look great. They want their parks clean. But people take pride in the city. And I think that's something that is, a, is an item that I would think that we would need to you know, continue doing. And the third one is to just beautify our city. Again, parks, you know, work closely with the county government, work closely with the, the school district to bring people here. Because the more people that we get here, the more people that share the wealth, basically bringing jobs here. That's the more money that we bring in, in possible wage taxes, which then we can eliminate the burden on our homeowners. because. They've paid dearly, you know, many years, and our, our population is, is getting older, and they're living on Social Security. And how can we tell them to, you know, pay a higher tax bill or get their in insulin? You know, they're, they're, they're getting an 8% raise in Social Security. Medicare is going to go up 7.5. You give me 100, you take 75. Where's that other 25 going? City of Scranton. 
Price of coal, 450 a year ago. I was talking to a woman today. $750 for two ton of coal. Where do we go? She's on Social Security. Those are the people that we need to look out for, our elderly senior citizens who built this town and our new people coming in that is going to stabilize it and, and take it to the next level. But those are a few of the things, Mr. McCandler. Sorry I got off on that, but the, okay. those are some things near and dear to my heart that I think we need to, to solve. Good. Also, second question. As a council member, explain the importance of being actively involved within the community. Well, that's a no-brainer for me, sorry. I, I am active and involved in the community, as I said in my opening statement and a, a couple of the questions that uh, Mr. Mr. Schuster had said. You have to be out there with the people. You have to hear what they're saying. You gotta listen to them, you gotta hear them, and then you gotta act for them because the council members, the city clerk, the city clerk's office, the council office, that's the first line of defense that people come from. They're not gonna go to the fire chief, they're not gonna go to the police chief, they're not going to go to the mayor, the treasurer. They're going to come here. And from this office, you know, that's where things get directed from. That's where we solve people's problems. I consider this the people's chambers, similar to the people's house in Washington. Here first, and then we, you know, branch out from here. Thank you. Uh, so you're the last candidate, and that was the last question. So. Thanks again for coming, and our decision will be made by next week. Thank you very much, and I appreciate the time night. that you offer me. Thank you, Mr. Matiewicz. If there are no firmer, further comments from any council members, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Yeah, he, yeah, he was unable. He didn't withdraw. He was just... He had a family situation where he was unable to attend.